So this trial was conceptualized to address a very important unmet need in patients with liver cancer or HCC. For the group of patients who were able to be uh, to undergo surgical resection or ablation with a curative intent, unfortunately there is at this point in time no adjuvant therapy for them, which means there are there is no uh, drugs to give them after surgical resection or ablation, and because of that the recurrence rate is of course high. And this is particularly so in patients with uh, high-risk uh, tumor features, such as larger tumors, multiple tumors, tumors with vascular invasion, and tumors with poor differentiation. So in this trial that we just uh, reported uh, at AACR, patients were randomized into two arms. Uh, in the one arm, they would receive atezolizumab plus bevacizumab as adjuvant therapy for 12 months or 17 cycles. And in the other arm, they'll be on active surveillance, which is currently the standard of care in the absence of adjuvant therapy. But patients on the active surveillance arm, if they do develop a recurrence, there is the opportunity to cross over to receive atezolizumab and bevacizumab. And for this trial, the primary endpoint is recurrence-free survival. And the uh, secondary endpoint is recurrence-free survival as assessed by the investigator himself, uh, tumor recurrence, and of course, overall survival. So what we adopted in this trial is something we call hierarchical uh, 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 analysis. So we trigger analysis at different time points according to the events. So the first interim analysis was triggered when uh, 253 recurrence-free survivals were encountered. And at this first interim analysis, the IM Brave 5050 met its primary endpoint and became a positive study by crossing the predetermined hazard ratio of 0 0.73 uh, and, and at a median follow-up of 17.4 months. And because the first uh, interim analysis for recurrence-free survival was positive, this in turn triggered the first interim analysis for the secondary endpoint of overall survival. But at this time, the data is relatively immature uh, because there are very few events, because well, in a way we met uh, the primary endpoint earlier than we thought in, in, in a sense. So what we found was that uh, patients on atezolizumab and bebazizumab has a much better recurrence-free survival. Uh, and, and at 12 months interim analysis, 12 months landmark analysis, Patients on atezolizumab and bevacizumab had a 78% uh, recurrent survival rate versus 65% for those patients on active surveillance. And this was uh, at a very good uh, p-value, a uh, very good hazard ratio of 0 .072, 0 0.72 and a p-value of 0 0.012. And if you look at invest independent review facility assess recurrence rates, at 12 months uh, landmark analysis, this was 34% for patients on active surveillance versus 20% for patients who are atezolizumab and bevacizumab. So that's a difference of about one third, 33%. So we are very happy about the results, but for the overall survival results, they're still pretty immature. The, percent, uh, the, the patient ratio available for analysis was only 7%, so we'll need to follow up longer for us to understand what the overall survival is.